Welcome to ASDSA's introductory video on professional designations. In this video, you'll learn about what a professional designation is and why it's useful to have one. Firstly, it's useful to think about exactly what you get from a professional designation. What is it? Firstly, we will examine what a professional designation actually is. A professional designation is an official endorsement from a recognized professional body concerning your skills and experience. It shows employers and clients that you're committed to your profession and that you have developed a level of skill in it. And it'll give you some confidence in your own abilities because these have been uh, checked by a well-regarded professional body. So a professional designation brings quite a few valuable things to a professional. Professional designations must be registered with SACWA to be valid. SACWA has given the ASDSA the mandate to award three different designations. First designation is of a skills development technician. And essentially this focuses on those people who are responsible for providing administration support for learning activities. The next level up will be a, a skills development practitioner. And this person is responsible for the managing of learning activities. Also might be known as the old style training manager. And the last designation that we have is that of a skills development master. And this is awarded to people operating at a strategic level in managing learning activities. So they might be the HR executive or the training development or learning executive in a large corporation. They might be sitting on a number of uh, strategic national bodies looking at skills development legislation. It's that strategic level of support that is critical for this designation. As has been mentioned, the technician uh, designation focuses largely on providing administrative support for learning. So this is person might be involved in getting together information for plans and reports um, on skills development, might be capturing data for mandatory grant reports or for reporting to senior management. We'll do some coordinating of skills development activities taking place in an organization. Might be working with outside vendors in making sure they deliver what they're required to deliver. The practitioner designation is for people who are engaged in the management of learning activities. That includes things like completing skills audits, sourcing learning providers, managing learning providers or learning provision, overseeing the actual learning delivery, tracking results of learning and reporting on results of learning. A person might also be involved in maintaining a quality management system, giving mentoring, coaching around career development and such like. The skills development master designation is for those people who are involved with strategic support for learning activities. And there's quite a variety of things that they might be involved in. For example, the masters are often involved in research into strategic learning and development. They might be responsible for the HR strategy in a large corporate. They could be working with design of quality management systems. Often they are the leaders of the entire skills development team in a large corporate. They tend to give guidance to EXCO on what's happening in the wider world and ensure that human capital development retains a priority in the business. And lastly, they could be engaged at a national or at an international level in working on skills development. The question then is, how do I get a professional designation? Well, essentially, you've got to demonstrate two things. Firstly, you have to show that you have the necessary knowledge in your field. Uh, as evidenced by whatever qualifications or skills programs you've, you've accomplished. Secondly, you've got to show that you've been able to use this knowledge to achieve results in real life. In order to get a designation, there are essentially five steps. It starts by making application on the ASDSA website and paying your fees for this evaluation. As part of that process, you will complete a self-assessment questionnaire, which will help you be clear in your own mind about which designation is most appropriate for you. Based on that, you will then compile a portfolio of evidence using guidelines that are provided by ASDSA. Once you've done that, 
you then submit this to our evaluators for an evaluation. So the evaluators will work through it and the results are checked by a verifier. If all parties are satisfied that you've met the requirements, you will be awarded your professional designation. It is important to understand the difference between a qualification and a professional designation. Qualification, as you probably know, shows that you have acquired a knowledge of an area of expertise through your studies. Once you have a qualification, it is yours for life. Professional designation is slightly different in that it requires that you show that you are competent in your field. Clearly, your knowledge is an important background to that. But competence in the field says that you can achieve real results in your field on the job and also that you remain current. In other words, you have kept up to date with the latest developments in your field of expertise. So a professional designation is awarded for a period of time. And unless you can show that you remain current, your professional designation will expire. In order to keep your designation, you need to demonstrate that you have remained current typically through embarking on a continuing professional development program. This is not all that complicated. What it really is saying is you need to go and do the things you would normally do to make sure you stay on top of your game. That means attending CETA forums, attending workshops, uh, working in projects, participating in task groups, conducting research, and of course, any ongoing studies. There's a wide range of possibilities of things that can count as CPD. And if you look at the guidelines that comes from ASTSA, you'll see there are a lot of things that you can do that will help you remain current. So the question is, can I lose my designation? And the answer is, yes, of course you can. How do you lose it? Well, firstly, if you don't show that you've remained current via CPD. Secondly, if you don't remain a member in good standing, it basically means you must pay your annual fees. And the last one is, if you breach the ASDSA code of conduct, in other words, if you act in an unethical or unprofessional manner, all of those reasons will result in you losing your professional designation. So what's the benefit of getting a professional designation? So how can professional designation help you? Well, firstly, this is a growing field. SACWA has recognized more and more professional bodies and they're playing more and more of a role in the learning environment. Secondly, it increases your own standing by confirming that you can do what you say you can do. That in turn helps employers or clients match what you can do to what they're needing to do. And lastly, that then opens doors for you and will help you secure future work either internally in your own organization or if you're working independently uh, with clients out there. The ASDSA encourages you to think about getting your professional designation. Please have a look at our website or give us a call if you want to make the next step in gaining your designation.